You know, I, I love some of your picks like Caterpillar because we talk about all these fancy. I know you got Google too, but all these fancy things we've been talking about for years. And now we're literally just getting down and dirty with the company that makes big old earth moving machinery. What do you like about Cat Tractor? Well, first, thanks for having me. It's great to be back on your show. And I just, I think CAT is a really interesting idea because it really takes advantage of the underlying picks and shovels of the economy. Uh, so ultimately, no, I think- the picks and shovels uh, uh, of the economy. Uh, but yeah, do you worry yeah, exactly. about the commodities market? <laughs> I mean, on one hand, higher commodity costs are good. You, maybe you have more money to buy CAT stuff. On the other hand, they're bad because you have less money to spend after you've had to buy the commodities. I just, I do wonder with higher fuel costs, whatever, how that- how that balance of power, if you will, pricing power, plays out with CAT doesn't sound like you're worried, Heather. Well, I think this is a really good example of where taking a longer term perspective can give you a different lens. And so, I mean, if you think over the next five plus years, I'm not at all worried about what commodity prices are doing right now. We're much more focused on, you know, what are the underlying trends in the economy, like deglobalization and decarbonization and the need to continue to find and mine for key materials that are really critical to enabling building out renewables capacity, things like copper. So short term commodity prices are not too concerning from our perspective. Okay, and kind of following up on that, if I buy a bunch of Caterpillar tractors and I want to ship them from the East Coast to the West Coast, the cheapest way is not by ship, it is not by truck, it is not obviously by plane, it is by rail. And it sounds like you think with higher fuel costs that rail companies like a Union Pacific UNP may be net beneficiaries because they are all in the least expensive way to move a lot of stuff a long way. That's right. And kind of sticking with the picks and shovels theme, you're really getting access to an underlying part of the economy that benefits no matter what kinds of products or, or uh, equipment or whatever need to be shipped across the U.S. And so I think Union Pacific is really interesting because it, it, there is some cyclicality in the business. So when you have an environment like this where everyone's worried about recession, you can see firms like this really get underpriced. And that's really what we're seeing. Yeah, I guess there's something about a train stock that's magic. All right, now I'd reference Google earlier. Let's go to that. You're going to go from heavy machinery and trains to this. I think Harvard Business School studies would say that Google has what they call in fancy educational terms a moat, that it is <laughs> what they do. There are some competitors, but I wonder if that moat is like a mile wide and a mile deep and nobody's getting across it in the, in the online ad market. Well, I, do, I did actually write a book on moats and, uh, you know, competitive advantage overall. You did? I think, yes, I did. <laughs> in I did not know this. I should know this. <laughs> it's called Why Moats Matter. <laughs> um, and I ultimately, had, okay. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I was going to say, I want our viewers to know. I had no idea, but I want to read it now. I love moats. <laughs> Excellent. Moats art. Well, what, <laughs> I think what you'll you'll find in there, and I think absolutely still holds true today, is that the network effect is really the most powerful source of competitive advantage. And that feels like such an obvious thing to say today. But in 2014, when the book came out, there were so few companies that were really benefiting from having a, a moat that came from the network effect. So Google's a great example. Alphabet is a great example of this. And, uh, you know, especially having a net cash balance sheet, and we're expecting it'll continue to grow at at least more than twice the rate of the, the overall economy. And so I think you're looking at a company that's really gotten punished by the re-rating that's happened in valuations that come from higher interest yeah. rates. 